It's time to stop ingrained tear out once and for all. Hi, I'm Kent, and welcome to Turn a Wood Bull. Today we're going to talk about ingrained tear out. I'm going to explain to you exactly what it is, and I'm going to give you seven tips to always be aware of to prevent ingrained tear out from happening. Okay, before we can prevent ingrained tear out, we need to understand it a little bit better. So, what is ingrained tear out? Well, I've got a bull blank right here, so let's take a close up look. This is a side grain mounted bull blank, and side grain mounted bull blanks are the majority of most bulls. You can do an ingrain bull blank, but it's not as common as a side grain bull blanks. Now, when we say side grain, what are we talking about? Well, so we think of it this way this is exactly how the tree grew up and down. And so we're turning this sideways. We're not turning end to end, we're turning sideways. So all of the grain in this bowl runs across like this throughout, all the way right up to the edges. So if you think of this bowl blank as like a bundle of straws, that's gonna help us out a lot. All right, so if we think of this bowl blank as a bundle of straws, which it essentially is because all of the fibers and the structure of the tree are growing this way. And when we come around the edge of this bull blank with the bull couch, we're gonna have essentially four things happen. We're gonna cut side grain, we're gonna cut in grain, and then we're gonna come around, we're gonna cut side grain again, and we're gonna cut in grain again. Now, this in grain is where all of the issues lie, right here. When we come around and cut across the ends of these fibers, which is just like the ends of the straws, we're gonna have issues with these snapping off and tearing if they're not cut properly. So we really wanna cut the ingrain portions of the bowl as best as possible, and we really wanna be paying attention to that area because that's where ingrain tear out is going to occur. And it won't occur on the sides necessarily. It's most likely gonna occur on both ends of the bull blank. So if it helps, think of the visualization of the straws. Cutting down the side of the straw, if you're like whittling with a knife, is super simple. It's gonna cut very smooth, and you're not gonna have any issues. However, when you cut across the tops of those straws, that's where you're gonna have problems. Now, if you have wood that is green and is wet, what happens is all of these fibers are plump full of moisture and they're supporting one another. So it's real easy to make a, a smooth cut across them and there's usually not a lot of tear out in green wood. This is a dry piece of pecan that's about four years old. So it has ingrain that's very brittle and I've deliberately chosen this to show you guys what ingrain tear out looks like and to give you some examples of that. All right, now we need to talk about the anatomy of wood grain tear out. What I've got here is I'm moving my light to the side of this bowl. So if it's down here on the side and bring it, just bringing up the edge, almost like the sunrise coming up across the, the ground. What that's gonna do is it's going to highlight the, the high areas and show the shadows of the dark areas. What we need to know about ingrain tear out is that it is not just a surface problem. It runs deep into the wood. So if you think of that straw analogy, instead of the straws being cut smooth across the top, they're breaking off and some are breaking off way down below the surface and then those fibers are getting ripped out. That's what ingrain tear out is. So we can't just simply sand this out or we can't just make a quick little thin cut across this and, and fix it. As a matter of fact, if we make several thin cuts, which I'll do in just a minute so you can check it out. If we make several thin cuts, we're, we're still gonna be left with little divots there because we haven't worked ourselves down to the bottom of those pulled out torn ingrain fibers. So this is what we're looking for and this is what we tr wanna try to avoid. We wanna have a nice smooth surface here without ingrain tear out. So now that we know what ingrain tear out is, what can we do to prevent ingrain tear out? Okay, I'm gonna list the seven things to be aware of to avoid ingrain tear out in order. The first, if you can imagine, based on what I'm doing right now, is to make sure that your bowl gouge is nice and sharp. So go back to your sharpening station and sharpen up your bowl gouge and make it nice and sharp prior to making cuts on your bowl. OK, 
Okay, this is a half inch, 55 degree bevel swept back bull gouge. This is my standard go-to bull gouge. This is what I love to turn with the most. It doesn't mean it's the best. You may have a different type of bull gouge that you prefer, and that's totally fine. This is what I prefer to use. If you'd like to learn more about tool sharpening for wood bowl turning, check out my e-course. There's a link in the description below. The second most important thing to do to avoid ingrain tear out is to make sure that you're doing a grain supported bowl gouge cut. So in this case, I'm moving from the base of the bowl up to the rim, and that is a supported cut. If you haven't seen my video, which direction to turn with the bowl gouge, you need to check that out because there's lots of great information there. So first I'm gonna make a supported cut, then I'm gonna make an unsupported cut so you can see the difference. Okay, that's a supported cut. Now I'm gonna go from the unsupported direction and we'll meet that, that over there. Okay, let's take a look and see what happened. So I come around to the end grain and look right here and I'm gonna move my light on the side. I can see that the supported cut is nice and smooth and the unsupported cut has plenty of divots. You can see those, all of this ripped out, torn out ingrain. So we wanna make sure that we have a good supported direction cut when we're using the bull gouge. The third most important thing to keep in mind when you're turning a bull to avoid ingrain tear out is to make sure you're riding the bevel. Think of the bevel and the line that the bevel creates as a guide. You want to make that parallel to the surface that you're cutting. You don't want to push the bevel into the wood, but you also don't want to be up on the tip of the bull gouge and letting the tip scratch into the bull. If you let the tip scratch into the bull, you're going to leave tool marks. If you rub the bevel, you may leave burnished marks on there as well. So you want to basically float the bevel. Some people call it floating the bevel. I call it riding the bevel. If you want to learn more about this, check out my video on riding the bevel. And here's what it looks like. Okay, and I'm going to use the AHBCs here. I'm going to anchor to the tool rest. I'm going to let the heel rub just a little bit. Then I'm going to engage the bevel by lifting up on the handle just a touch. And then I'm going to cut with the cutting edge. Okay, let's review those first three steps because they are the most important. And keep in mind, I have these in order of importance. Number one, you have to have a sharp tool. Think about it. If you have a blunt tool that's going over that end grain, it's essentially going to rip those fibers out. So we need a really sharp edge that's going to cut those fibers instead of ripping them out. Number two, we have to cut with a grain-supported direction so that those grains of the fibers and the end grains are not being torn out. Again, check out my video on that and you'll, you'll get a little more information there and hopefully that'll help you if you're having issues with that. And number three, we wanna make sure that we're riding the bevel and we're not on the tip of the tool. If you're on the tip of the tool, it's a good way of telling that. You're gonna have grooves in there. It's gonna look like, a, like an old record, like a vinyl record, because you'll have tracks in there and tool marks all over. That's a good indication that you're up on the tip of the tool and not floating that bevel, okay? Now, if you have burnish marks on it, on your bull, then you may be rubbing the bevel too hard. You don't wanna push the bull gouge into the wood. You wanna just float it right across the surface of the wood. And you want that bevel to be parallel with the cutting surface or the cut surface of the bull. All right, let's move on to number four. You want the lathe speed to be as fast as possible, but not too fast. Now, for instance, you wanna start off slow and bring the speed up until it's not running smooth. If you see a vibration in it, right there I'm getting a vibration. I'm gonna back that speed down. And we don't wanna be turning at speeds more than 1,000 RPMs. However, we also don't wanna be turning too slow so that it's 
taking too long for us to make the cut, and that's going to contribute to tearing out ingrain fibers as well. So you want to make the, the lathe as fast as possible within reason. Don't go beyond 1,000 RPMs. The fifth tip is to make your pace nice and even. You don't want to move the bull gouge faster than it can cut. And what that means is if you move too quickly across the bull surface, you may not be getting a nice even cut, and that's going to cause tear out as well. So make a nice, evenly paced cut. The sixth tip is don't make your cut super deep. Don't bite off more than the bull gouge can chew. If you start making a cut that goes deep like this, you've got a good chance of making tear out. Instead, step back and make a secondary cut. And then just make smaller, lighter cuts instead of one large cut. Smaller, lighter cuts are going to have less chance of tearing out ingrain fibers. So let's say that you've done all three of the most important tips first. You've sharpened your bull gouge. You're doing a grain supported direction cut. You are riding the bevel. Those are the three most important. You're doing all three of those and you still have tear out. All right, so you've moved on to the next three. You've increased the lathe speed as fast as you can go. You've slowed down the pace of your cut with the bull gouge so that it's cutting nice and smoothly and it's not you're not rushing the pace. And you are not cutting too deep. You're making light cuts across that surface, but somehow you still have tear out. Okay, so now here comes my seventh tip for you. If you've gotten to this stage and you've done all six of those tips and you've done them really well and you're confident that they it should be coming out smooth but you still have tear out, there's a good chance that it's all has to do with the type of wood that you're turning. Now you have to remember, and this is true, everything we do in wood turning, the tree species dictates how, what the results are going to be every single time. And like I said, I got this older piece of dry pecan to show you guys so you can see the ingrain tear out really, really easily. Now, if this were a piece of freshly cut sycamore that's nice and green in that, I could jump in here and probably break all six of those rules and still put a nice cut on the outside of a bowl and the inside of it for that matter. Just rough it out, but have a beautiful finish right off the, right off the tool with almost disregarding all six of those rules just because green sycamore turns beautifully, okay? But that's not what we have here. So you probably have a ton of different other timber species that you're working with and you see those characteristics as well. So what happens when you get to a dry piece of wood that has ingrained tear out that's, that's a problem? There's one more trick that I'm going to show you, and this is actually pretty cool. So think about it. What's happening is those end grains or the ends of those straws, they're all weak and they're dry and they're brittle. So basically just touching them makes them want to break off and look look bad on the end grain of the bowl. So what we can do is we can actually strengthen them. All right, so let me show you my seventh tip. And this is kind of a really cool secret. Okay, what we can do is we can take some homemade shellac. If you recall the video I showed you guys how to make your own homemade shellac, check that out. And this is a perfect use for that shellac. Think of this as more of a tool than a finish at this point. What we're doing is the shellac has bonding capabilities. It's more of an adhesive here. So we can put this in on the ingrain of this bowl. And what it's doing is taking all those loose fibrous ends and gluing them together making them more sturdy and more stable so that when our sharp bull gouge comes around, it cuts them off more cleanly versus just tearing them out like it was before. So what we can do is we can apply a couple coats of this. Now, I made a one pound cut of shellac for my finishing, and that works well for, for this. You may want to make a second batch of shellac and make a two pound or a two and a half or three pound cut and that's going to be a thicker shellac that's going to bond those fibers a little bit better. It's perfect as a tool 
for fixing ingrain tear out. Now, we'll let that dry, and what'll happen is we can come back to this and make all of those same supported sharp bull gouge, bevel riding, fast lathe speed, slower pace of the of the bull gouge and lighter cuts across the surface and this surface is now going to be much more receptive to making a nice smooth cut versus tearing out that ingrain so there you have it there's seven tips to reduce the possibilities of ingrain tear out now i've got to tell you if you've gone through all seven of these tips and you're feeling pretty confident about your bull gouge turning skills and you feel you followed all seven of these pretty well, there's a good chance the wood that you're turning is past its prime. And Richard Rappin has a good, uh, a good saying for that. He said, uh, life is too short to turn rubbish. <laughs> of course, he says it with an Australian accent, but I always like that, that phrase, life is too short to turn rubbish. If you've got a piece of wood that the ingrain just keeps tearing out and you've done everything in your power to prevent that from tearing out, and you followed all these steps and it's still tearing out, I'd find something else to turn. But these seven tips should help you prevent ingrain tear out on any bull that you make in the near future. So let me know if these tips have helped you. Do me a favor, leave a comment below, click that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribing. I've got tons of videos coming your way and if you click that subscribe button, you'll be notified when new videos come out. So until next time, as I always like to say, happy turning.